Uh, one quick thing that I wanted to mention before we start with this video. I am nominated for the Happiness is Handmade Award and I need your help. You need to vote for me in uh, two categories. I'm actually nominated for the Design Magician and the Knowledge Master. I will link the voting down below in the description. It will help me out so, so much. The award ceremony is in June, so you just have a little bit of time left mid-June, something like that, and I will be attending as well. Maybe I'm going to see some of you there. I'm super excited and thank you so much. Now back to the video. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to make, maybe you can already guess what we're making, a dindel, which is a traditional dress here in uh, Bavaria and Austria, you know, some other regions as well. I love them. I have a couple and I'm going to attempt my very own one. It's been a dream ever since I bought my first one, more or less, to make myself my own dindel. Uh, so I thought since it's um, beginning or starting to get warmer and summer is around the corner, more or less, <laughs> it's uh, a good idea to start with making one of these dresses. I will be making a multi-part series out of this because I want to make sure to have everything perfect and down and very detailed and so on and so forth. I don't want to have something that I made but that I'm not 100% happy with. So that's my plan for these uh, couple of videos for the series and <laughs> I am super excited to share this project with you guys. Today we're gonna start with the bodice of the dress and I'm gonna grab the two that I have prepared right here because there are a few differences in design that is your choice obviously but um, a few key elements that I wanted to point out. So these two bodices, as you can tell, kind of look similar, but there are a few differences. This, for example, has a lace-up in the middle front. This one has a zipper in the middle front. They are both very, very low cut. And typically you would uh, also wear a blouse underneath, which will, will also be one part of this series, because I want to make a full, complete dress, which has three parts, or I'm gonna make three parts. You could also make four in underskirt, but I'm not really wearing that, so I will be making a three-part dress, which includes the dress itself, an apron right here, which is, you know, loose, and you can change it and, you know, design it yourself, basically, to whatever dress you want to do, and the blouse, which I don't have here at the moment, but it's basically an, a blouse that just reaches under the bust, and it's typically white, you can also have it in black or different colors. I've not seen that very often. Typically it's white in a, a cotton fabric, a light cotton fabric or a lace. And it's just, you know, giving you a bit more coverage and it has sleeves typically short ones or also maybe this length, but it also varies from design to design, also from, you know, trends and stuff. Uh, modern dindles look different than traditional ones. I will be making a modern one. I wanted to point that out. So there might be a few things that traditional ones have, which I won't be making. Also, I wanted to point out, I'm not an expert in traditional dindas. I have never made one before. I will be looking at the two that I own. I have another one, but that's very old and I don't like the style anymore. So I will be trying to somewhat copy the elements that these have but make it my own design. So if there is anything that's missing, I'm very sorry, <laughs> but I'm trying my best to, you know, make a good looking one that um, has all of the details that I know. <laughs> and yeah, so apart from that, as you can see, I'm gonna point it out right here, has a lot of details, a lot of uh, embroidery, embellishments, whatever, typically has these, um, dividing seams here in the front. This one also has piped seams, which I quite like. Everywhere it has piped seams, so I'm gonna do that too. And here in the back, it has these seams right here. I don't know what they're called in English, translated from German, it would be a Vienna seam. I don't know, so like the, the capital of Austria. That's what this would be called. I know that in the front it would be called princess seam, so I'm not quite sure if that's the name as well. I'm gonna research it and put it right here what the seam is called in English. And then it has a big big skirt, lots of pleats here in the front in the back and also in the front as you can see right here. So I will be making that as well. Obviously it has 
pockets underneath the apron in somewhat the side seam, not really, it's in a pleat, so it's hidden behind the apron. And um, so I will be doing that, of course, too. And then some embellishments down here at the hem, which we're also gonna do. And then, of course, the apron, which has this, the smocked air area right here in the on the upper part. It also has a bow tie, which you typically don't do in the, I mean, it depends on what your status is, basically, in relationships, uh, it depends. So like on the right side, it means you're in a relationship. On the left, it's single. I think in the front is virgin and in the back is a widow, something like that. So I just put this together so you can see I'm obviously not a widow. So that's also um, a detail. It also has the embellishments down here at the hem. And typically you can make a dinner out of cotton, linen or silk. This one, for example, has a silken apron and also a silken look for the skirt. This one is a jacquard. I'm not quite sure what material, but um, usually, like this one, it's made out of cotton. I will be uh, playing around with all of the, the elements and also the patterns on the bodices, the skirt and the apron. I'm super excited to go fabric shopping. I want to make something greenish uh, lilac, something like that, like a grayish green or like a mint and then also a really nice lilac because I think that would go together really well. And I've also seen a couple of fabrics already when I was fabric shopping a few weeks ago um, that I really, really liked, like the color combination that I really liked. So I'm gonna check out what I can find after I've done the mock-up and the pattern and so on, because I want to be sure how much of what I need to buy because of all of the, you know, all of the details up here. It has pearls, it has this trim right here, which is which you can make yourself quite easily actually. And all of this, so excited to do this. It's gonna be a lot of handcrafting and hand sewing, but I will be trying my best to do most of it at the machine for my sake and for you guys' sake. And yeah, we're gonna start with the upper part today, the bodice, and I'm excited to show you, so let's go. Today I will be starting with my base block. I haven't used the base block in quite a while. I've been draping a lot uh, lately, which I enjoy. So I will be using my base block. You can click up here in the eye for a tutorial on how to make your own base block to your measurements. This one has an addition of one centimeter. It's important for this kind of dress that it fits tightly because you don't want to have anything loose. It's more or less a knot boned bodice so it's like very tight so i will be using my base block with one centimeter addition and i won't use my sleeve for this because as you've seen it it's sleeveless the sleeves will be coming from the blouse that we're gonna make in another part as well so we don't need this and we're only gonna draw or cut out the bodice until the waistline because everything below that is skirt maybe another thing that i want to add more seam allowance, like two centimeter seam allowance, because it is a lot of work, obviously. Bodies change, so you might want to have a bit more seam allowance to either, you know, make it a tiny bit bigger or to also make it smaller, obviously, you can do that too. So it's always a clever idea to make it adjustable just in case you, you know, something changes. As you can see here, it has it has quite a big seam allowance here. I think it's like two centimeters on both sides. Same goes to the other side right here. And yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. Probably a smart move. Also, I will be doing this style right here without the lace up, I don't know if I said it before, which has the zipper in the center front, which is a quite traditional way of doing it. So I will be doing this here too. Talking about shape, this one here has quite of a straight neckline, I would say, so it's like a square. So this one right here has quite a, squ a square neckline, which looks quite nice, but I really, really fell in love with a heart-shaped neckline, like just a teeny tiny bit. I've seen it on a few websites uh, that sell uh, DNL. I've seen that kind of neckline, and I really, really want to make one like that as well. Also a blouse that has that kind of neckline and a small puffy sleeve. I really, really like that. So that's my style that I will be going for. Obviously you can change that however you like, I will be doing a sweetheart neckline. Okay, 
I have my bodice on my dress form right now and I'm going to start draping. I have quite a lot of room here in the armhole bust area. Obviously, if you have a sleeve, you want to have this sort of room so that you can move your arm. For sleeveless uh, dresses, you don't need this anymore. So what we're going to do is put a dart pointing towards the apex so that we can move this later on and take out the dart completely. So we're not gonna have any darts in our front piece at all. We're gonna move everything into the seams that are near it. So we're gonna have the neckline somewhere here. Everything's gonna be either in this part or in the side seam. Speaking of the side seam, if we move the this area into the dart, the side seam gets pulled towards the front. So we might want to redraw the side seam onto the actual side seam, which I have on my dress form with the black tape marked. And then we probably also want to take out a tiny bit of this sleeve volume into the back. So what I'm going to do is draw in the seam that the dress has. So it will be pointing into the armhole somewhere here and then just go in a nice curve into the darts here. I quite like the position of the dart itself, so I'm not going to change that. But what I can do with that is cut into the dividing seam right here and take out a tiny bit of volume that way so that I don't have to do a curved weird kind of dart so just like this and if i put this nicely onto the body you can see how this overlaps for one centimeter or something like that that would have been the volume that i put into this weird dart that i did before and we can also take out a tiny bit here i feel like there is a tiny bit too much volume here under the bust just a tiny bit maybe five millimeters which I'm just gonna take out. I am going to redraw the side seam because it kind of moved when I took out a tiny bit um, out of the back. Just gonna straighten it out again. And I'm also going to attempt to draw the neckline and the shoulder seam. This is probably gonna be somewhat of a challenge, but we're gonna have to fit this with a blouse underneath anyways. So I'm just gonna put on a blouse that I already own and see how the neckline looks, if it's too revealing, if it's too high and something like that. But usually the dress itself is very, very low cut. So you couldn't even wear it without a blouse. It just would be too revealing. So I'm not too afraid to make it too low cut. Maybe the upper line here. And then the, the straps, they're kind of curved. So they are smaller here and thicker up here. I think up here it's about seven centimeters, six to seven centimeters. So I'm going to go inwards one centimeter because I feel like the neckline in the back is a tiny bit too uh, small. And then just measure seven centimeters here as the width for my shoulders. And just eyeing the line here, something like that and then doing the same here but moving into the armhole which is probably somewhat around what i have marked on my mannequin which we can adjust once i redo the fitting and it's very important to me to just fit this until its final shape because i really really want to give my best for this and also wear it for the oktoberfest and stuff in september i think i'm gonna make the strap here a tiny bit smaller and then also make the sweetheart neckline and a tiny bit more towards the outside over here. And then have this here somewhat curve up and then into the seam here. Because I feel like it looks a bit more modern if it has a wider neckline here. Something like that. I will also change the positioning of the dividing seam to be more towards the front. And I'm gonna let it end in here as well but then have a nice curve towards the front i'm gonna go through the apex maybe move it a tiny bit more um, to the front and then make a nice straight line here like this and i already have two pieces here where i can put you know all of the darts i can put into the dividing seams and so on now for the back we are going to continue the sleeve seam down into the back piece and I also see that there is too much of space here in the armhole so I'm going to add another dart here 
which ends in the point of the shoulder dart, which we're gonna take out like this. And I'm gonna connect it to this armhole cutout that I already drew for the front like this. And for the neckline, I'm just gonna let it ease into the center back in a nice way. It has a high, a high closure <laughs> in the back because um, it has a lot of coverage here and then it has uh, you know, a low, low neckline in the front. So I'm going to do that too. And then I'm gonna draw in the dividing line. I quite like what I did here. So I'm just gonna do maybe a tiny bit more curved of a line that and somewhat near the placement of the dart because I quite like the placement there. Something like this. And then I can move all of this into the seam right there. Okay, and I think that's already the first fitting. I'm going to draw on all of the adjustments that I made so that I can transfer it onto my pattern. And that's it for the first fitting. So let's put that onto a pattern and redo this and put it on my body to see how it fits. Okay, so this is mock-up number two. And as you can see, I changed everything that wasn't nice in the first mock-up. Uh, there was something, like there was too much room here on this part right here. So I moved the straps to go more this way. Then I also changed the positioning of the front dividing seam to still be, you know, in line with the straps that I also put more towards the center front. But apart from that, this fits really well. The only thing that I want to change is I want to lower the neckline just a tiny bit, maybe one and a half centimeters, because this feels a bit too high. I know this is weird, <laughs> but as there will be the blouse underneath that will have this shape probably, it needs to be a tiny bit lower so that you have this effect with blouse underneath and then the dress on top. So that all fits very well. I'm gonna turn around, so don't be confused. I still have my pants on, I just have my uh, apron on to see how the look looks, <laughs> how the look is uh, in, in general. So in the back, I still have nothing, obviously, since I didn't make the skirt yet. But this is what the back looks like. I think the dividing seams work quite nicely. I like uh, the uh, neckline up here, like how high it goes. Maybe I'm gonna take out just a tiny bit here still, but that's nothing that I need to fit or anything like that. I can just put that into either the dividing seam or, you know, whatever I will be doing with this. Uh, but apart from that, I think this fits really well. I like the um, sleeve cut out here. I feel like I can move my arms pretty nicely. It looks really nicely. There's nothing pulling or tucking or anything like that. The only thing um, which probably will change when I put interfacing and layers and stuff like that into the bodice is this wrinkling situation here, but that's nothing to worry about right now as this is just a one layer of thicker denim fabric. So I'm quite happy with how it looks like. And I guess I am ready to make this in my fashion fabric that I have not yet bought. But I will be going uh, fabric shopping tomorrow, so I'm excited. <laughs> So it's the next day I went fabric shopping and I got a bunch of fabrics. I actually got a few options as you can see right here because I couldn't really find exactly what I was looking for but I found other fabrics that I also really liked like this um, boucle right here for example. I absolutely love this one and then I also have this linen fabric with this very you know harsh look like this thick weave here which I also really like for a bodice and then I have this here which is just a cotton and this which is a cotton so these both would work for the skirt or the apron but I'm not quite sure how I want to you know put put this together as of right now I decided to work with this fabric the boucle for the bodice but I am keeping this for maybe another one in a green so these two are bodices fabrics and then these two are for my skirt but I'm thinking of using this for my skirt and then maybe this one for the green one not quite sure yet I love all of the color combinations so I'm quite free to do whatever I feel like basically and then on top of that I also got a bunch of 
stationary is it that the word it's not the word a bunch of like ribbons and stuff like that to uh, put on my bodice i also have this piping here which i thought would look really nice with this fabric on the outside in between the seams of the bodice because that would tie together the skirt fabric the color and i think that would look really really elegant so that's what i will be using i'm going to use this as the inside and then i'm going to put this around the piping while sewing and then these are to put on top of the bodice and then also for later on the apron i also got buttons that i think would look really really nice on this fabric and yeah that's all for my facing i have this fabric right here which is you know, the other uh, cotton fabric that I uh, purchased as well. I just used that for my uh, facing because I wanted something cute, different, but I obviously can't use this thick boucle for my facing because it's it would just be too much, too thick. And for my lining, I used just plain white thin cotton fabric. So that's all. I'm not going to use this today because this will be my skirt, so I'll keep that for later. And this is all that I will be using today. And then a bunch of this, which I'm going to put on top right here at the neckline and so on and so forth. I'm super excited and I think we can start right away. Let's go. So to start off, I'm going to put my outer bodice together. So everything that is in this boucle right here. And it's pretty straightforward. I have to say though that I put interfacing onto the boucle as written on my pattern. And then I also overlocked the edges as boucle tends to fray. And on top of that, I also added two centimeters seam allowance onto the side seams. And I'm just gonna uh, sew at two centimeters just in case it needs to be made bigger at some point. So that's something that you might want to do as well everywhere else i just put one centimeter seam allowance regularly and yeah that's all that i did for this i also uh, put interfacing onto my facing and not on my linings but all of that is written on the pattern itself and you should be good to go when if you read what's on there we're gonna start with just putting all of the pieces together so i'm just gonna start with closing the back dividing seam putting right sides together right here on both sides and then just closing this rounded seam right here you're gonna find some notches in the pattern that you want to match up and I will be starting from the waistline sewing upwards all the time just because for me it's easier to match everything up if I go in one direction throughout the whole bodice everywhere one thing that I forgot to mention just now while I am sewing dividing seams together I'm gonna put the piping and the uh, satin wrapped around the piping in between all of the seams like this just as a detail and I will be using my one-sided foot for that as it's going to be the easiest to sew. I'm going to do that in one go. Okay, this is what the back piece looks like. I'm just going to give this a good press because the uh, piping kind of makes this pretty stiff. And there are a few darts in this uh, piece. So, you know, you're going to have to iron this out. So this is what it looks like. And now we can continue and put the side seams together, which is this piece right here. And as I put two centimeters seam allowance into my pattern piece, I'm obviously gonna sew at two centimeters. Hello, it's editing me. I quickly wanted to say that it's so, so, so much easier if you leave the side seam open until the very last step. I redid the bodice in just another style. I did the green one as well, just to try it out and to have it because I decided to make two dresses and I left the side seam open up until the very, very last step. So I was able to turn everything over uh, through the side seams and did not have any, you know, difficulties while sewing the armhole shut and like turning it over with the facing and so on. So I recommend to just leave the side seam open until the very last step. As all of my dresses are made, as you can see right here, they literally are made the same way. So I don't know why I decided to close the side seam as like literally the second step. Leave it open and then you're gonna find it's so so much easier because you can turn everything over through the side seam. So yeah. 
just wanted to point that out. So different techniques, you know, whatever you feel comfortable with. I am going to manufacture this however I manufacture line bodices. So I'm going to make an outer bodice and then an inner bodice and then put it together and um, yeah, work from there. So once we've done this, we can continue and put the front piece here. I'm gonna put piping into the front dividing seam as well. You're gonna find a notch somewhere in the dividing seam here. Um, mine is just a bit hidden because of the uh, overlock seam that I have uh, for the uh, end of this piece right here and you're gonna find another one for the bust point which the front piece has as well so you're gonna want to match both of these up and I'm gonna put piping in there again and what I also did for the piping was top stitch it really really closely to the piping so that it lays in the direction I want it to lay. As you can see right here, I use a brown kind of um, thread and very closely stitched to the piping. That's what I'm gonna do here for this piping seam as well. And then I'll come back and do the facing and lining portion because the bodice is then already finished. Also gonna iron the front piece and you're gonna find that you have to cut into the seam allowance here. I'm just gonna cut towards the seam right where the front piece stops so that you have a nice corner here like this. And now done with this, we can put this aside and work on the lining, facing and lining. What we're gonna do for the lining is basically exactly the same as for the bodice minus the piping. I also have two centimeter seam allowance at the side seam. But before we can put these together, we're gonna have to put the facing onto the respective lining pieces as they are divided just as a small detail. You don't have to do that. So there are also like the dresses that I have, for example, just are lined with a plain white fabric. So you can do that as well. Just put the lining and the facing, the pattern piece, as you can see, they fit together perfectly just like this. So you can just tape them together and cut out one lining piece out of one fabric. Same goes to this piece right here. It also fits together perfectly with the facing and then also the center back piece right here like this. So as you can see, we have these three pieces that we're gonna have to put together before we put the lining and facing um, piece together, bodice, the lining bodice, I guess. So we're gonna close all of the dividing seams here. So the side front seam, the ba side back seam and the back seam right there, just right sides together, ironing the seam open and that's it. And I'm gonna do that for all of these three pieces and then just close the bodice exactly the same as I did for the outer fabric minus the piping. Um, so I'll see you once this is all put together. Okay, so this is what the lining looks like. As you can see here, I cut into the round seam allowances to be able to iron the seam allowances open. You might want to do that too. It just lays better in general. And then I gave it a good press. If you can, try to match up the facing seams. I didn't, but I'm also not a perfectionist, so I don't really care what's here on the inside. It's fine to me. Technically, According to the pattern, this should match up just because it's literally just cut in, in two pieces, the pattern itself for the facing and the lining. So this should work if you do it um, better than me, but I'm gonna leave it like that. And what I will be doing now is to put lining and outer bodice together. So I saw on my other dresses that they have piping around the neckline and then also around the armhole. And that has two main positive aspects or advantages. So normally for the armhole and the neckline, you would put interfacing tape just to stabilize it and so that it doesn't stretch out while sewing because these are on the bias and this here as well and here, and this would stretch out while sewing. If you put piping in there, there's nothing to stretch. Like this is the most sturdy thing you can do probably to your bodice. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do instead of putting interfacing tape. Probably you can do both as well, but 
you know, there is no need and it just gets too thick uh, if you work with a fabric like this. If you don't want to put piping in your neckline and your armhole, then I would suggest to put interfacing tape all around the round corners, the round seams, um, just to, you know, avoid any stretching and then bubbling up while wearing. Uh, I will be putting piping though. And just to be sure, I'm gonna do it one after the other. So I'm gonna put piping around the neckline um, up until the waist down here. So once all around here, and then also into the armhole um, before I sew the lining onto the bodice. So as you can see right here, I just stitched it on into the seam allowance. So I will be stitching at one centimeter somewhere around here, uh, making the piping quite small, which is what I wanted. And then I uh, decided to use uh, the, the off-white one for my neckline. And here, this was quite a difficult um, position right here, uh, but we're gonna make it work with the iron. Same goes to here. It's gonna stretch out around the corner as it is bias binding. So that's important. You're gonna need uh, bias binding for this. Otherwise, uh, this won't stretch out around the corner and you're gonna have like some wrinkling here and it won't look nice. Now we can put right sides of bodice and of lining together and match up all of the seams and stitch all around the neckline first and then I'm gonna come back and tell you how we're gonna do the armholes because that's gonna be a teeny tiny bit complicated but we're gonna make it work. So let's stitch around the neckline while matching up all of the seams and notches and so on. And that's what it looks like once I turn everything over. You're gonna have to cut into the corner here, probably cut down the seam allowance quite drastically because otherwise you're not gonna be able to turn this piece over. So that's what I'm gonna do here too. Otherwise this just won't lay flat and just bulk up weirdly. Same goes to this edge right here. So this is just going to be a lot of seam allowance on the inside. So you probably also just want to cut this down. So now it just has more room and just overall it looks nicer and lays better. So let's do that for the other side as well. And I'm going to add a top stitch to the seam here, just like I did with the other piping. So very closely from the right side of the fabric sewn uh, to the edge right here, just to make everything lay nicely. Before that, I'm gonna quickly give this a press just so that it's easier once I top stitch. And now I'm gonna add a top stitch all around the neckline. So to sew the armholes, we're gonna grab from the inside the seam allowances of both the outer and the lining. And now we're gonna have to probably do this in two goes. So we're gonna go from the side seam upwards towards the shoulder seam on one side and just work our way up as far as we possibly can. So we have to kind of wiggle out the uh, fabric from the straps. And since the straps are only, you know, kind of small and there's not too much space uh, this is only go so far we're gonna try to sew until the sh shoulder seam or somewhere before that because here in the back part we have a little bit more seam or like a little bit more room so we're gonna make it more easily towards the shoulder seam but we're gonna start here and sew just along here and just wiggle this out as we go on the sewing machine and then we're gonna do the other side same goes to the other armhole of course So I had quite big difficulties with aligning the seam here because the armhole of my facing stretched out quite a bit as you can see right here, which is not really 
good. <laughs> so I undid all of the stitches and then just pin it in place how they're supposed to go. I am now going to iron this and then probably just gonna resort to top stitching this in place as I did with, you know, I also put top stitches to all of the other seams. So this shouldn't be too big of a problem. I'm just curious how like all of these stretched out seams are gonna end up looking. I am going to put the stretched out side, so the facing onto my machine so that the walker of my machine is gonna help me align everything and avoid wrinkles, I hope at least. Um, so I'm gonna try to somewhat stretch this and then sew quite closely to the corner here as well and try catching the facing while I am doing that. So this worked quite nicely. I'm just gonna try to stretch out the armhole while ironing it, just so that it doesn't lose any uh, width. So like uh, this, and now I'm going to replicate, replicate this on the other side as well. I'm going to just top stitch this ASAP and not do the whole going on the inside and turning it over thing. So I'll be doing this here from the very beginning and just put pins in and then top stitch just as I did, as I did here. Okay, I'm gonna try to top stitch this as well and see how it goes. So, I just put the bodice on and yeah, it didn't fit. <laughs> That's uh, because of the piping and everything like that. Um, so it just shrank a tiny bit here in the armhole uh, because I uh, just didn't think about the piping when I was doing the pattern. I will change that for your guys' pattern so I make the armhole a tiny bit bigger so that you won't have the same problem that I had. Basically what, I, m what my problem was is that it was stretching here too much and therefore creating this weird gap here in the straps again. So, because I ha also have an over and an underlap here for the buttons. So what my solution for this is, is to just add a zipper into the center front as traditional dresses also have, or like, I don't know if it's the traditional way, but there are dresses with the zipper in the center front. Mine have that, for example. So I will be doing that and I'm gonna top stitch the zipper into place um, once the whole dress is finished. So for now, I'm just gonna baste the zipper in place here so that I can do all of the applications and uh, embroidery and whatever I want to do for now, because it will be somewhat on top there. Or actually, maybe it's not the smartest to add the zipper before. I'm not quite sure what I should do. Probably it's the smartest to add it at the very end by hand, just so that all of the embroidery and everything lays on top of the bodice and then the zipper is just underneath there and also goes into the dress or like into the skirt. That's why I also have this thing down here, but I will be basting it on here for, for now and then put the bodice on and see how it looks with the zipper in place. So this is what it looks like as of right now. For some reason, I can't find my other blouses. I don't know where I put them, they're probably somewhere here because I put out all of my dresses to show you guys, but nevertheless, it doesn't matter. So this is what the bodice looks like as of right now. So as you can see, it doesn't have this problem anymore here where it just bulges outwards since I put um, or gave it more ease around this area here and I will be putting the zipper in and it should all work out quite nicely. So now uh, the only thing that's left for me to do is just embellish the neckline right here as much as I want to. I have a few ideas and a few materials and then I also was thinking about maybe using some pearls and whatever else I can think of, but it looks really, really nice. I'm super happy with how this looks at the moment and I can't wait to finish this dress and then also, you know, make a nice apron and obviously a skirt have not 
I don't have a skirt yet, I'm wearing pants. Um, but this is the illusion that's gonna create. Super excited and I hope you guys like it so far. So let's get to embellishing, embroidering, decorating. <laughs> So it's the next day and today as you can see right here is decorating day. I put a few things out that I want to use. Um, the satin band that I still have left from the piping I think I'm gonna use as some sort of border here around the neckline and then I also have this beautiful lace kind of thing here that looks like leaves so I will be doing a this on top here probably. Then on top of the um, satin band I was thinking that maybe it's some sort of embroidery stitch would look pretty nicely on it so I will be trying out some stitches with my domestic machine. For a reel I already tried out a couple of stitches that my domestic machine can do and I really really like this stitch right here. It just looks very very um, elegant in my opinion and it's also kind of broad and not as repetitive as for example these or like the pattern is not as small as this stitch or this stitch this is a wider pattern in my opinion so this with some sort of contrasting color i think would look really good on top of the satin band and then on top of that i will be adding this band right here so that the embroidery stitch kind of still is visible on one side of the flowery band and then to top everything off i was thinking about adding some pearls every now and again not sure how how i will be doing that but so, some sort of pattern like left and right left and right and so on all around the neckline so i will have to hand stitch that everything else will be <laughs> hello everything else will be done by machine at least I think so, not sure yet how I will be attaching this band right here. What do you think about this, huh? Do you like this? Hmm? So yeah, that's the plan. Let's see how we're gonna end up making this and let's start. And that's it already for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. As you can see, that is the bodice that came out of this whole experience. I also put a lot of decorative pieces up here. I embroidered it with one row of pearls and you know did all of that as you saw in the video. Um, I am super excited because this is such a versatile pattern. I um, 
you can obviously make something as decorative as this one, but you can also make it super toned down and uh, very elegantly and classic if you want to, obviously. So there are so many options that you can do with this pattern and I'm super excited to like complete this and then put the skirt and the apron and uh, the blouse and so on and so forth. So stay tuned for that. Best thing so that you'll get notified is to just hit the subscribe button down below and ring the bell. I always post on Sunday, so you can keep an eye out for that. And in the meantime, if you'd like to uh, see what I'm doing apart from YouTube, you can follow my Instagram. Uh, link is also down in the description below. I'm posting loads of reels all about sewing, uh, pattern making and designing. So if you're interested in that, just check out my Instagram. And with that, I'm going to say thank you so much for watching and I'm going to see you next Sunday. Bye, guys.